welcome! Today we're going to be looking at how to weave our beautiful clay looms that we made last time. So you're going to need some yarn, um, a nice pair of scissors to cut with, your clay weaving loom, and a snippet of paper. And why a snippet of paper? Because if you cut a long little piece out like this, so that it's a rectangle, when you pick which color it is, you plan on weaving around your loom. And I'm going to take off enough yarn to look like I'm going to crisscross it several times and snip it. I'm going to take this little piece of paper and I fold it in half so it makes a little V shape like that. And then what you do is you place your yarn inside there so that it sits down in that little folded part. Okay. You can take your needle and you take those two ends that are loose, pinch them together, put them both through the needle at the same time and then you can pull your yarn through. It's a nice, easy way to get it threaded on that needle if your holes aren't already big enough on your thing, your loom. Now, when you're working on the loom, any sewing project, you always wanna start from the back side and work up. Now, I haven't tied off this yarn yet because there is no knot that I can tie big enough to keep it from coming through that hole. So what I'm going to do is just leave it a little loose and hold it to the side while I'm working. When we do this, we wanna do it almost directly across. We wanna keep like an X pattern going on here. You can also count to see how many holes you have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I have 21 holes in here. So I am going to go about halfway, which is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But that's still kind of sideways. I don't know that I like that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take it to the 11th one and put it through. Remember, I'm holding that other end so it doesn't come out, okay? Once I do that, I'm going to come back up through in the hole right next to it. It doesn't matter which side, which hole. It could be this one, it could have been this one, as long as it's right next to it. And I'm going to go straight across the opposite, because remember we want that X in the middle to the opposite side over there. Okay, same thing, I'm gonna to go to the hole next to that one. Can't go the other direction because I already have yarn coming out of there. And I'm pulling it kind of tight and I'm holding it on the back side with my fingers each time. And I drop it down in this one, go through, and you kind of get the idea where I keep moving to the hole next to it that's empty and crisscrossing as we go. All the way around. And usually I speed up the film for you when I'm doing this, but I had the feeling a couple of you are want to see the whole piece of this work, so it, you get it reinforced in your head that it's the next hole over, and then you're crisscrossing to the other hole on the other side. And I'm pulling all my yarn all the way through, and trying to pull it a little taut. That means a little tight. Not so much that it's going to break my yarn, of course but enough that it's holding it in place. We don't want them loosey-goosey when we start weaving. Still holding onto that first one so it doesn't come out. And I'm resting the end of my loom because they do get a little heavy on the table. So almost there. And now you'll see I come to my final hole and then back to the original hole. Oops, don't want it to get looped the wrong way. Back to the original hole that's over here. Then I can snip this. And I have these two, and I can tie them off because they are not the same yarn that close to each other. Like that. And then you're gonna have the basis for the starting of your weaving to work your way out. Let's work on that first and then come back and talk about weaving on the okay, middle. Okay, so to weave this, we're going to do very similar to how we started with our yarn the first time. We're going to put it in that little V-shape piece of paper. Take that, pinch both pieces together, pull it through. And again, not tying off the end. I wanna look for where we tied off and then put a little dab of hot glue to hold that initial thread together because it's a double thread in there. That's going to be our starter thread. So we wanna push down to the middle against that starter thread. And we're going to pull up 
um, until there's like a little tail on the back. And we're gonna leave that little tail in the back while we're weaving. And then we're gonna start our over under pattern. So if I go over it, under, over, under, it's that same over under we've been doing in weaving. I'm gonna go, well, just a couple, except I pulled out my end. And sometimes that happens. So I pull out my end and tuck it back in there. I'll hold on to it better this time. There you go. See? So I've got the over, under, over, under. I'm going to, I can turn this as I go because it's in a circle, so you'll need to turn it and make sure you're keeping the over, under pattern, which is a little tricky at first when we're working tighter in the middle. So I'm going to pull here. And you can see it's starting to take on the circle shape. So this one's on its way over. And then under, over, under, over, under. Be careful when they get crisscrossed near each other that you're keeping the over, under. Because for the first couple of loops around, you have to force that center a little bit more until it gets tighter to make sure that it's still working. So we're gonna come all the way back around. And I'm pulling it kind of gentle right now. I'm holding onto the back to make sure it's tight. Now, see how this is sort of still out? I wanna tighten that up a little, so I'm just gonna tug. You notice when I tug, it sort of hides some of those? That's okay, because now as we go around on the second round, we're doing the loops backwards. So I went over this one, but this time it ended up being under. So then you switch. So if you had an odd number of holes, this will work out this way for you. If you have an even number, they're gonna line up a little bit more. So you just keep doing the over, under, over, under all the way around. You notice I do like three or four at a time and then I pull the yarn through. I don't pull it tight until I get back around to the end. And I have to keep turning my loom. So this one stopped under, so it's gonna go over for the next one, under, over, under. And then once you get the hang of it, it just keeps going. So all the way back around again. So I'm gonna pull it gently tighter this time move those in while I pull and it starts to make that nice basket weaving effect as we go around. Okay, so if you want to change colors any place along the line, you can snip that yarn short, and then you can select another color and pull some off, just like we did before. Maybe about, you know, three feet worth, if you want to measure it, you can. We have yardsticks over in the drawing center. Same thing, a little different though. You need to tie your two color ends together. The easiest way to do that is to put them side by side like this. Wrap them around your finger so they crisscross right here. And then you tuck it, those two ends through the hole. So you're keeping those two ends together the whole time and then give it a tug. And now it's just one continuous piece of yarn. Go to the other end, thread it back on your needle and just keep going. Okay, once I get to a point where I wanna be finished with my weaving and I wanna tie it off, I'm gonna send it to the back side. I'm gonna find that one that I left looped from the beginning of my weaving. Remember, we left that one loose and I'm going to gently pull it just in a regular tie and then just do another regular tie. Make sure it stays kind of taut or tight, just like that. Snip off my extras and then where I switched my colors earlier, I can snip off those extras and then I have a beautifully woven ceramic piece. 